Good afternoon um, or good morning or, or evening, uh, depending on, on where you are um, in the world and joining us today. And welcome uh, to this online event dedicated to connecting with the MIDIT operators uh, 2022. My name is Sila Sepp. Um, I serve as the Deputy General Manager and Programs Lead at MyData Global. And um, I have the pleasure to, uh, to then host today's event um, um, for, for the next uh, hour or so. Um, and although I see many familiar faces um, and names in the, in the audience today, I would like to also welcome any first time attendees of MyData events. Um, either joining us uh, today here or watching the, the recording uh, later. So uh, with that, um, I'd also take a few minutes to um, briefly introduce to you what my data is if you're new to, new to that. Um, so in short, my data is about uh, human-centric approach to personal data, it refers to that. And the core idea about my data is that a person like you and I uh, should have meaningful ways to know who collects and uses data about us, um, say how it is, uh, this data can be used, correct false information if needed, um, etc. And as we live in a digital era, era and leave data traces behind every day, uh, we must have also actionable means to, to protect this data and also benefit from that. So this human-centric approach to personal data um, addresses many of the challenges individuals, um, organizations and, and societies face today, and all in all strives towards a more fair, sustainable and prosperous uh, digital society. In this society, we think that people get value from their data uh, and set the agenda on how it is used on the one hand. And for, on the other hand, ethical use of data is always the most um, attractive option for organizations who develop and provide services to us. And organizations do that by collecting and analyzing data, um, but they don't always have to do it themselves. Um, so in fact, uh, sharing data between organizations um, can help minimize data gathering from individuals and ensure that um, the data doesn't get outdated. So um, in the MyData model, um, different organizations and services could act in various roles, um, either as data sources or data using services, or even both. And to do it in a human-centric way, um, one must include also the human person into these interactions giving them the power to determine which data can be used, shared, and, and for what purpose. And of course, this needs to be um, a simple and seamless process uh, for all parties. And this is where my data operators become important um, as operators enable individuals to access, manage, and use their personal data securely, as well as uh, to control the flow of personal data with uh, and between data sources and data using services. My data operators concept um, was introduced already back in 2014, first in Finnish and then in, uh, in the next year in English. Um, but it was even uh, further rooted into the my data thinking when the community defined and described its vision in the my data declaration. And um, operators were not just a visionary idea, um, but actual services already existed in the, in the market by then. What was little known uh, was how do different service providers really offer their services and the infrastructure uh, for data sharing in practice. Also, how do they um, interact with each other and other stakeholders um, on the uh, ecosystem level? And this started to get um, a bit clearer uh, when MyData published the Understanding um, MyData Operators White Paper in 2020 and launched uh, the MyData Operators Award process. Since then, um, dozens of companies have been awarded uh, the status of MyData Operator 2020 and 2021. Um, and we are glad to announce the awardees of the year 2022 uh, during this event uh, today. Um, but not only. Um, in the end of uh, last year, uh, we came together to discuss about European Commission's vision and uh, plans for creation of sector-specific data spaces. And then um, in January, 
we came uh, together to talk also about Data Governance Act uh, that would start to regulate uh, data intermediation in uh, Europe. Today, we'll explore further on what is uh, the combination of those uh, and how can operators help make um, different data spaces thrive while uh, also giving individuals the needed agency over their data. So uh, with that, um, I would end here my short introduction and uh, welcome on our virtual stage um, and the uh, two excellent speakers today. Marko Durpainen, the CEO of uh, 1001 Lakes, a consultancy company from Finland, uh, who will uh, share his insights about the data spaces and operators uh, combined. Um, after that, we'll give the word over to, to Antti Jogi Poikola, the vice chair of My Data Global, and also one of the lead editors for the Understanding My Data, uh, My Data Operators white paper. And that um, got an upgrade uh, this year, um, and uh, we're proudly publishing uh, this paper today. Um, and then finally, we'll reveal who are this year's awardees for the My Data Operator 2022 award and uh, take a moment to congratulate them. Um, so before I give the word over to um, our presenters, just a quick note also about uh, practicalities, um, a kind of reminder that uh, this uh, online event is recorded and um, the recording will be shared uh, later on uh, with the participants and um, those uh, who want to know about my data operators. Uh, but I do also encourage you to make use of the chat function to add any comments or questions that come, might come up uh, during the, the event. Um, um, and I will try to pick up some of them uh, also after each uh, presentation. My colleague Demo is also here uh, and mo will monitor the chat uh, in case you have any problems uh, with technicalities or, or so. So do reach out to him also if there's uh, any issues and we'll try to sort it out uh, on the go. So um, I think that's it. Um, let's continue then with our first presentation um, and I'll hand over the, the virtual mic to Marco Turpeinen to tell us more about uh, data spaces. Please. Well, thank you, Sille. Um, very, very nice to be here. My name is Marko Turpenen. I'm the CEO of 1001 Lakes, also affiliated with, uh, with Aalto University, which is a university here in the greater Helsinki area. And, uh, and, and also having some links to the, to the different phases of my data. Uh, and My Data Global over the years, uh, and, um, and and some of the roots of the My Data movement also go back to the the work that we did in Alto Alto um, uh, some time ago already. And I'm very very happy to see how the organization has grown and and uh, and where My Data is is today. So uh, we have plenty to be proud of uh, together. Um, but today I was um, asked to um, uh, give a brief introduction to the story of data spaces and uh, and how does that connect to uh, my data operators and uh, and this whole event is about celebration of of my data operators so i tried to do justice there and and and, and really kind of you know build the bridges between what what this what this data space ideas are all about and what the 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 concept of my data operator means and and uh, and hopefully uh, this will uh, be beneficial for all of us. And, and please ask questions, uh, more than happy to have a dialogue on this as much as time allows. Uh, very briefly, so our company, 1001 Lakes, well, the name is kind of a double or triple pun, but uh, but so data lakes, zeros and ones, obviously we are from Finland, uh, much, much more than 1000 lakes in this country. Uh, also this story of data spaces. So when you put 1001 data lakes together, so then maybe you get a data space. Uh, so this idea of very large collections of data from multiple different sources working together in sync and, and, and seamlessly. So, so that's what we would try to enable uh, with the things that we are building. So it's, it's a story of data ecosystems, uh, but also very concretely being there to build these data spaces. So far, we have been completely 
domain agnostic. So we've been working all across the space in different uh, areas uh, from retail to agriculture to um, energy and uh, mobility, and most likely will continue to do so um, because there are many things that are common between these different uh, domains. And one of the big hopes is also that we can enable the exchange of data across domains better. And that's also definitely where my data operator story kicks in because the whole idea of my data is also that uh, from an individual point of view it doesn't it, it shouldn't make you know that much difference whether it's in industry wise is in one domain or another as long as i can get a service that makes sense for me combining or moving data between uh, organizations in different industries. And then when we look at, you know, where we are in this development, so very much individual organizations are still looking inwards. This is our data. This is how, you know, it would be great if one division in our company would know what the other division has and is doing. So we are not so ready yet for these larger networks and data data exchanges. That's a, that's a story in, in most companies even still today, but more and more we are going into the mode of data collaboration, data moving between organizations, and then these networks start to network and we are getting these larger, larger data ecosystems. Um, now, um, really kind of conceptually, so when you think of, well, what are the different views on data then? So you can think of one organization's point of view. So this picture uh, puts the organization in the middle. An organization thinks that we have our proprietary data. We don't share that with anybody. Then there is this next layer of confidential data where we have agreements and, you know, okay, with these guys we can, and, and, but, but it's very controlled and, and confidentiality is in, you know, you know, something that, that, that is, is guarded. And then the next layer is what I hear called distributed data is that, well, we are, you know, willing to share and distribute even, you know, outside this sort of sphere of confidentiality, uh, but we want to retain control on what the data is, who gets access to it, who has used it. So, so that what I call here the distributed data. And then there is the world of open data where the uh, organizations might be contributing, uh, uh, but they don't really, you know, care in a way what's being done or what's used, or they don't want to retain control, let's put it that way, on what's done with the data. Um, so those are kind of the different categories of data. Then the other view is this network centric view. So you have a network of parties, members that together create a network and it, it can have three members or it can have 300,000 members. But the story is that you create this sort of trusted network of parties and you can call this now a data space and these different members connect to this data space. So you have some kind of a connector, a technical way of connecting your data. And you can be the data provider or you can be the data using service or you know, the data consumer. But, but, but nevertheless, the idea is that you somehow connect to this uh, shared space. And within that space, there are all these different you know, other animals that you can call intermediaries and, and they provide data intermediation services and my data operator is one of these. So, so you have these entities in the middle who are checking whether it's okay to move the data across this arrow and, uh, and they provide a service in, in doing that. Um, and, uh, and log, for example, that what's happening uh, when the data is being moved. So, uh, well, when, you know, logging, another function. So, and then there is this world of, let's say, untrusted parties with whom which are not part of this uh, uh, data space. And then the third view is the my data view, human centric view. So the person individual is in the center. And, uh, and again, as I said earlier, so it's not about, you know, what, how the organizations have figured out what the data is uh, moving between them. And it's not about an industry. It's about what can I get as a as, a, as an individual, as meaningful services, and how can I control the usage of the data about me in a way that makes sense for me as an individual, empowering people. So, so and these three viewpoints, they all exist. And my point here is that they all need to be in, 
involved and they all need to be implemented if we want to have successful implementations of data data spaces so you cannot start with you know just one of these view for example the second view is not enough we need to include the view of of, of human centricity in 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 data spaces um, there's been work recently on kind of well how do we structure um, the the and guide uh, in 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 building these data spaces one paper uh, in that um, was uh, um, written by um, a task force in a European project called Open DEI, and I was part of the group. Uh, but I think it's it actually does capture quite well sort of what what's at stake and what what does it mean when we when we when we uh, talk about data spaces and what could be the, the key principles around which they should be built. Um, so you can find this uh, on the web, uh, obviously, but uh, also just to let you know that there's going to be an update uh, in the coming months. So, uh, so the next version is being worked on. Um, but, but in this paper, so there are four of these sort of main principles of, of, of data spaces and, and design um, behind data spaces. A lot has been talked about data sovereignty, and it's a concept that can be understood in very many different ways. But here, I think this is quite good definition. So capability, kind of the, 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 the power of the, the data source or the, 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 the originator of the data to be self-determining how the data is used in the network. And that can be the natural persons or they can be organizations. So clearly this is sort of fully aligned with the my data thinking. So the individual should have sovereignty on the decisions about the data that concerns them. Um, data level playing field means that uh, um, we should you know, strive for structures and, and architectures that 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 are you know not um, creating the or, or replicating. I would could even say the current situation with with where winner takes all and and we end up in monopolistic situations. So the the competition should be who provides the best service, not who controls the most data. Um, the third, decentralization. There's a lot of talk about decentralization at this moment, but again, I think this is fully aligned with most of the thinking that I know around my data. So, so kind of having more decentralized structures, things like self-sovereign identity works completely well in this thinking of what the next, next version, next, next generation of our infrastructure, our soft infrastructure should be. And then the fourth uh, principle is that when we build governance structures for this, so we should combine the players from public sector and private sector and work on these issues together. So those are the four design principles. Um, then I'll go uh, through a couple of examples of uh, entities that are working on this as we speak. So IDSA, International Data Spaces Association, is probably the furthest along as far as you know, uh, um, established organizations that have used the term data space for a long, long while already and have kind of a position that yes, we have an architecture. It's the RAM, IDS reference architecture model. The 3.0 currently, 4.0 very soon out there. It's the blueprint on how do you build data spaces and the architecture uh, for them. Then you have the, 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 the open source building blocks, the GitHub ID, IDSG, uh, which, um, for example, I don't know if it currently has, but it, it was at least planned to have uh, an implementation of, well, here is an open source implementation of a My Data Operator connector on how do you connect My Data Operators to, to, the, uh, to the IDS data spaces. And, but that's the kind of thing. So it should have like, you know, reference implementations, reference connectors, reference uh, uh, building blocks for everybody who, so to get it easier to start it. Um, so in a way, no magic there, but that has been, you know, slow in coming. And now there is a big push actually to, uh, to make that happen. And the third is certification. And in IDS, there is a very strong notion of certification. So the different 
technical solutions be then, for example, the connectors, for example, how you connect to these data spaces. So they should be certified. And, uh, and you can argue that does that work very well with the whole idea of, uh, of, of you know, very decentralized systems, but nevertheless, so, the, you know, it's very much embedded now in the way IDS is thinking. And then the fourth thing, and I'm happy to, to say that I'm quite involved there because we are an IDSA member and I'm actually chairing the rule book uh, working group in IDSA. So, so then the fourth dimension here is sort of, okay, how do you put these things together? And then when you actually implement IDS based data spaces, how do you do that in the real world? And rule book is, is there to help you to do that. Uh, so that's an example of, 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 of an entity. And, uh, and, and, and just, this is a couple of years old picture of what the IDS uh, sort of structure is. And I think sort of it's telling that here the data sources and the data, data users, data, data using services, they are all machines or clogs. Uh, so so the, the story behind this was that, that it was actually called industrial data spaces earlier and there was almost no consideration whatsoever on personal data none and 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 there and that's now changing and and there's a good discussion a lot of debate on how do you include personal data in the in the whole thinking of data spaces and i think them when yogi and others are doing great job in kind of building these links and this is hugely important because i think uh, in all of these endeavors around data spaces so so we are you know very misguided if we don't take into account the the, the human centricity and my data thinking so there is a big space that the my data operators need to also fill in the whole vision of data spaces if the, if it's ever to come come to fruition there are other big initiatives many of you probably have heard of gaia x that's the european other big thingy and these two ideas and gaia x are actually you know very much overlapping and connected just today i was presenting earlier in the ideas a uh, certification working group where one of the topics was well okay if i do get an ideas certificate does that then mean that i'm already kind of labeled as this and this trust level uh, in gaia x the answer probably is well not yet but in the future yes you should and uh, so um the 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 these two initiatives are working uh, hopefully more and more hand in hand and, and uh, going into the same goals with same kinds of solutions. But I have to say that they also start with some very different you know, starting points. For example, identity and trust again. So identity um, in the uh, IDS model earlier was pretty traditional, whereas Gaia X started early on with decentralized, so DIDs everywhere. And so how do you align these two initiatives is a, is a, is a topic in itself. But anyway, so, so these are the two big things going on uh, where the whole idea of data spaces are being pushed and, uh, and, and the story of personal data, my data operators uh, will be important part of making this happen. Then uh, just to mention that, okay, there's also you know, concrete work trying to align these different initiatives. So there's something called Data Spaces Business Alliance, where IDSA, Gaia X, but also other uh, uh, initiatives, Fiware and, and Big Data Value Association are working together to come up with a clearer story of this is what we are actually going after together and how do these different things actually form a coherent picture that everybody can buy into. And that's something to follow also as my data operators, because now um, the, the, the story is that there are a little bit confusing and parallel stories. And the whole, whole point of DSBA is to come up with, with a coherent story together. This is a very busy picture and I won't go into the details at all, but just to you know, highlight a couple of things on the work plan and, and what this DSBA is now working on. And uh, personally, I'm also involved in the lower left hand uh, or, or corner on the so-called common data space framework work. Uh, but, uh, but, but the whole idea is that, uh, that, that the output should be that we no longer have like, you know, completely misaligned uh, technical references and, uh, and terminology and, uh, and, and so forth. But uh, it's a story of alignment. And then 
it's also a story of road mapping. It's also a story of how do you, uh, uh, you know, deploy these, uh, these um, um, and, and implement the data spaces. And then on the very right hand side of this picture, there is also something which definitely is related to and, and relevant for my data. So there is this so-called data space support center. There was recently a call by the European Commission in the Digital Europe program. And, and my data is very much involved in, in an, in, in an initi initiative where all of these big players or the main players around data spaces are now trying to uh, uh, come up with, uh, with the winning consortia for something called data spaces support center. And I see a, a, a big role for my data global and my data operators as, as, as influencers in, in the story also through the data space support center. Anyway, so again, I won't go into details of this picture, but as you can see, so plenty of things hopefully will uh, uh, come out of this. Then um, if this is confusing, if you <laughs> feel like that you would like to know more, so luckily there are resources. So, uh, so uh, um, with my data, so we worked on something called Data Spaces Resource Library. Um, it needs an update. I know about know that. Uh, uh, and uh, Sille, I will work on it. But anyway, so the story is that that, that what's happening in these different uh, forums and uh, what are the initiatives? How does this link to legislation and so forth? So we tried to put like a package together, which you can find under the My Data website. Uh, so, um, yeah, any feedback appreciated on this, whether it's helpful and uh, if something is wrong or missing or, or, or needs updating. So, uh, so let, let us know. But anyway, so, so that's a place where you can find more about data spaces. And, and just to summarize, so the data space story is happening. It's here. I mean, you have big powers pushing that, that this, you know, data sharing uh, and data spaces is actually coming and the industry is more and more buying into the story as well at least in Europe the big industry players are buying into it and uh, and there has been this sort of first gener generic architecture and framework building standardization for a while already the building blocks are getting there and the regulation especially by the European Commission is kind of aligned with the whole story of data spaces when we talk about data governance act and data act for example so there are kind of explicit links to the data spaces thinking well the, the the concepts and principles are still being kind of okay we need to be clear when we talk about what do we mean by a data sovereignty what do we need mean by soft infrastructure but these are the terms that are being used more and more when we talk about this whole whole whole, whole sphere and uh, and the key message is being that uh, that that now these are be becoming uh, actually implemented uh, on the technologies that are being being uh, offered and, uh, and there is a clear role for my data operators to play in this story. So it's, 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 it's going to serve a very important function in making sure that we have the human centric uh, view uh, in the whole story of data spaces embedded. And, uh, and, and hopefully this is also the way to, uh, to create the, the, the larger scalable business opportunities for my data operators as we move along and the whole story evolves and uh, and this will be uh, uh, implemented in I don't know how many thousands of data spaces but um, um, that's it that's what I wanted to share with you happy to answer questions hopefully this was uh, useful so uh, uh, thank you for listening thank you Marco uh, really exciting uh, developments and like it seems huge what uh, is already out there um, all of those initiatives and then the resources available. Um, I will pick up a few questions uh, from the from the chat. Um, and the first one there was actually a comment from from Bo about uh, the risk um, that um, some of the EU regulation will put so much burden on on data use that it can be uh, can become too expensive for all but the largest players. Um, do you see any um, developments, initiatives, uh, also in the uh, or considerations um, that have been taken in the developments of uh, of data spaces and how it's evolving that would, you know, avoid uh, that or or also cater to the smaller and medium uh, sized organizations in uh, for the data spaces. Well, I think it might be a valid concern. I understand uh, Boo's point. 
um, well, certification is, for example, and labeling is a, is one 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 example story. So that 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 it can be hugely, you know, overdone and 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 expensive. And and we don't want to have very very expensive and cumbersome certification schemes where that everybody needs to go through, which would we clearly also favor the bigger players versus the the smaller players. So that's one area, for example, where these initiatives that I just mentioned. Are, are 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 setting the rules and, uh, and 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 it should be fair and it should be accessible it should be you know, something that that it's not prohibiting you know smaller players to uh, to to uh, to take their role um and uh, yeah again um, i mean whether the the eu regulation as such is is putting a heavy heavy kind of uh, burden on smaller players um remains to be seen i don't I don't know. I mean, we haven't seen the real implementations of Data Governance Act yet. We don't quite yet know where Data Act will fall. How will this actually be implemented? How do we make it so that it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, non-discriminatory for for smaller players as well? I think it's also very much a matter of implementation and 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 how do we interpret these different regulations? than what's already out there, as you know, these are set in stone. Thank you. Then continuing from uh, Yogi, uh, Yogi's question, uh, what do you see as the current and future connection between the concepts of data intermediary, uh, such as my data operators and the uh, data space? So as said, so the whole story of data intermediation services and these kind of actors that that are providing these 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 um, um, well various kinds of services for the members of a data space so i think that that's been in the architecture from the beginning i think the the, the new thing uh in a way uh that 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 in my mind you know has changed is that there actually is more emphasis on the story of personal data so I mean, there were, for example, clearing houses. There has been sort of a, you know, data brokers and such. Uh, but the, the 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 somebody who checks whether this data has been consented by the individuals, and that's what my data operators are, for example, doing. So that wasn't really that much part of the story. There is this concept of data usage control that's used in data spaces. And, and I see my data operators and intermediaries as, as actors who are actually you know, implementing and, and helping to implement that, that transparent uh, data usage control. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And then final question, uh, as we also need to move further. Um, Frederick is asking, how do we ensure global reach uh, for what is created so it doesn't stay only European? Excellent question. Uh, well, there are, uh, for example, in IDS uh, and IDSA, so, so there's quite a lot of uh, very good in, uh, involvement from, from, from members beyond Europe. So, for example, from Japan, so, uh, so lots of good examples of, of Japanese participation. Um, so, so I think the story, to a certain degree, already is global. But on the other hand, so I think there is now a lot of like Europe says that this is the way we would need to do these data spaces, and uh, and 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 I think there is still a long um, yeah debate needs to happen between well I mean is this at all at all something that the players in U.S. for example would adhere to that discussion in my mind hasn't really you know fully started even yet so and then of course the big players from the states are active in the European initiatives on data spaces but I don't see many kind of equivalent kind of endeavors happening in on the other side of the Atlantic yet. Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, also attendees here from outside of uh, Europe, so hopefully we can continue the discussions uh, after the presentations on, on that as well, and uh, continue after even this uh, event to see how this can be expanded and what can uh, the might the community members or, or our attendees um, well contribute to, to that. So 
thank you, Marco, for your excellent uh, presentation. And uh, hopefully you can yeah, continue um, or stay with us for the, uh, until the end of the event. So um, let's continue with our next presentation from, uh, from Antti Yogi Poikola. Uh, as mentioned, he's the vice chair of uh, MyData Global Board and also the, one of the lead editors for the MyData Operators White Paper. So uh, Yogi, please, could you share us uh, the latest and the greatest about MyData Operators? Thanks, uh, with a pleasure. Uh, what a great group we have here again. So nice to meet some uh, familiar faces and also the new ones. So uh, I'm Antti Yogi Poikola uh, from MyData, one of the uh, co-founders and also currently uh, serving in the board, but here mostly now uh, deeply involved with the MyData operators uh, thematic group uh, and uh, awards and the new paper that we uh, just will publish today. So for many, this story is uh, familiar. You uh, have heard it uh, before, uh, but I still would like you to listen in because it's uh, also, this is the story that we are building together and it's, it's the common language that we are developing. It didn't exist before we started to work together with this group of uh, my data operators. But yes, on, uh, on uh, some part, this story did start um, way, way before. So uh, there has been this idea of some sort of intermediary uh, services that stand between people and uh, uh, different web services that uh, use and uh, create some personal data. So it was all, all, uh, introduced already in the end of 90s as infomediaries. Uh, and before dot-com boo, uh, boost, there was lots of funding going to these kind of uh, initiatives. They didn't quite fly. Technology was not there yet. Uh, time was not ripe, definitely. Uh, it has been developed conceptually on vendor relationship management and life management platforms, personal data stores. Uh, and then uh, roughly like um, not, not 10 years ago, but almost, we published the first MyData uh, uh, paper first in Finnish, uh, developing this concept of my data operators, and there has been some other thinking. And now we heard about what's happening in the Europe. Uh, the European Commission set out the Legislation Data Governance Act that defines data intermediaries. And already earlier, Japanese government uh, developed sort of soft law for information banks. So in a way, this idea is old but it's also new and constantly developing. And I, I would uh, boldly claim that this group of my data operators that we have here is probably uh, leading on the leading edge currently in this kind of thinking. But we have to uh, remember that we are uh, standing on the shoulders of giants from before. Uh, okay. So uh, this is what is uh, what was depicted in my data declaration. Uh, simply to uh, very simplified version that uh, there is the person, and then there are some sort of data uh, services that uh, where data is being held. So it's called data sources, and there is a debate that, of course, person himself herself is also data source. So uh, let's not get to that debate. But nevertheless, uh, then there are some other services where data could be used, and the idea is that what would be a human-centric way to control these kind of flows of data? Uh, and there comes the idea of uh, my data operators that would help in this kind of data transaction and also uh, make it sure that uh, the data transaction serve the people uh, and uh, not uh, so that the data is handled behind our backs. And uh, this simplified uh, uh, image comes from the understanding that currently organizations pretty much manage the whole value chain of data. Of course, this is changing already. Uh, but still integrating data from multiple sources is super hard. So basically, this we, we can give an example that a bank gets all information of my payment transactions. They manage the data and they use it, but they use it very little. 
the same data could be much more useful for myself if I could get some sort of financial dashboards or other kind of services. But these services are not in the scope of bank who gets the data. So it's kind of locked uh, the potential of personal data, how it could be beneficial for people is, is uh, uh, locked. And the idea is that if we could manage so that the same data that is collected in one place could be used and reused in other places, of course, only when we give the permission. So that's the division. So specialized services for different parts of the value chain and the management part here is that we are speaking today as my data operators. And uh, uh, as the simplified image earlier only showed one operator and one data source and one data using services. Uh, so obviously we want to create uh, uh, ecosystems uh, where there are multiple of these different endpoints. And uh, also my data operators, there should be multiple. We don't want to end up in the world where there is only one, one my, my data operator. Like we have uh, different banks and different telecom operators and they, they create global networks. So if I have your phone number, I can call you. That's, that's the magic that we want to make happen also in the my data world. So that if I'm uh, connected to one my data operator and maybe you are connected to the other one, and the different data sources and data using services uh, might be connected also to different uh, my data operators. They should create a network that uh, is interoperable. And that would create also kind of network effects that uh, this uh, system uh, actually grows. And here we have this uh, dotted circle of uh, uh, personal data ecosystem. And that could be, uh, roughly mapped also to the concept of data spaces that we heard earlier, but this kind of mapping we are just doing now. And, and we are involved as my data in many of the initiatives that were uh, discussed before. But how to make these my data operators actually something understandable? First of all, that people would know that, okay, if you ask what is a bank, people can answer that, okay, bank is some, some kind of entity that, gives this kind of services. You can uh, deposit money there and you can perhaps get some loans and so forth. So people have conceptual idea what is a bank or and people have conceptual idea what is, uh, what is a telecom operators. Okay, yeah, it's an organization that gives me the mobile uh, phone connection and I pay every month and I can make phone calls and get data uh, connection, great. But if you ask uh, anybody, okay, what is my data operator? No, no answer yet. And this is what we need to develop that there is some sort of conceptual understanding. Even maybe the name is changing and maybe the future is so that people don't need to know what is my data operator, but still we need to go quite a long way that there is established position for these uh, operators. And that's, that's one thing we need common language for that. And the other thing is that how to make these operators work together so that uh, it, it wouldn't be this kind of work world where uh, you have to be connected to same uh, mobile phone operator than I am in order for us to make the phone calls. You can get the uh, gist what is happening in, for example, in uh, Facebook. I can only be connected uh, to my Facebook friends if they are face in Facebook, but I cannot be connected to my uh, friends if uh, I'm in Facebook and they are in LinkedIn. So this kind of interconnectivity between similar kind of services uh, is not something that comes out of uh, thin air. It needs to re be de developed. And, and this is what we call journey of interoperability. From bottom up, from the my data operators, understanding what they actually do and which bits can be fit together so that the operators create network that is bigger than any, any network of individual operators. And then this goes to the next le level of uh, uh, how to make it technically happen. So we, uh, in the paper uh, that we published on 2020, we developed this, uh, uh, at that time we called uh, proto operators. So we uh, knew that there are some organizations that uh, probably work like my data operators, but uh, we brought them for the first time together to create a paper and understand what are the common commonalities between these. Uh, proto operators. And this was back in 2020. And this is what we came out. Uh, there are nine different areas, identity management, permission management, service management, etc. And uh, that was our kind of uh, 
good guess on what what would be the commonalities and this guess then started to be um, validated throughout the my data operator award process so this is now third year in a row we uh, awarded first my data operators in 2020 then 2021 and now 2022 and each year we have asked these candidate my data operators how do you in your service portfolio implement these different areas of the my data reference model we do ask also some other questions but i'm now focusing on this one so uh, we have gathered lots of good data how these operators actually do these things and how do they understand and then we have fostered the debate around it so, uh, and the first version of the reference model was pretty thin it was just uh, identifying these th different areas and uh, writing shortly what it would mean and now we have understood actually uh, much better what the operators actually do and in this event today we publish the new version of the my data operator white paper which is still mostly the same but this area of the reference model it has been updated significantly based on all of the learnings from these three years and uh, this is what i uh, welcome everybody to uh, go and download and read now and this is my end of my uh part of the presentation. Thank you, Yogi. What are the, the questions from the audience to Yogi about my data operators? While you're thinking and, and writing uh, this, um, I would ask um, to just personally, also from your view, what has been maybe the most insightful to you uh, from the three years of operator words and also now re rewriting uh, and upgrading the, the um, white paper? Oh, there are so many, many insights, uh, bits and pieces here and there. I think it's really uh, generally uh, the how hard it is, but still the persistence of the group. I think uh, uh, many, many here have been following the journey from the beginning or actually before the be beginning and coming back and again and still uh, uh, contributing and finding piece by piece some bits that actually can be agreed and it's not like big fights that somebody says that it has to be this way and other one it has to be that way mostly it's like battle between oh there is some fussiness that we all call with different names and we kind of maybe agree what it is but we don't have the common wordings and language for that so then coming up with these common wordings and language and while having these discussions also learning a lot so these have been very messy discussions uh, at, at points, and, uh, but uh, really giving the uh, credit for the persistence uh, for people to uh, go through the messiness of the discussions. So that's, that's what I want to say. Right. Philip is also asking, how will the MITRE the reference model align with the EU concept in the future? Uh, with the EU con concept, if you refer to, to the Data Governance Act and what is the requirements for the uh, data intermediaries there. So our plan is uh, currently uh, that uh, as this um, uh, uh, operator reference uh, award is, is really bottom up, it's self-description, there is no certification or real judging what, it, uh, what is good or bad, we basically just push everybody to describe well what they are doing. But uh, European Commission puts law that this is how things has to be done. So the, it's kind of uh, looking from uh, top down and we are from bottom up. And uh, practically, uh, I think uh, we will now split my data operator award in two tracks. One is that is uh, going to, to be uh, aligned with the DGA uh, specifically. And, and that's probably heavier process or more robust. There not, needs to be then some sort of uh, judging how, how things are done. And that's a development project for this year. And then we leave this uh, kind of lightweight self-description uh, process uh, for those who don't need to be aligned with the EU or working in other parts of the work, uh, world or just getting started so, so that we don't also make it too exclusive and hard. But yeah, we have the uh, intention to be very much aligned with the 
Data Governance Act, and I think it also serves for operators be beyond Europe. So there are good requirements that everybody should follow, even if they are not forced to follow. So there's uh, definitely, uh, this is an evolving process. Maybe as a last question, I would ask, um, what are the main next steps uh, do you see for the operator landscape in this interoperability uh, journey? Uh, I recommend you to download the paper and go there to the future work section. <laughs> so that's what is listed there. So uh, basically what we understood uh, now in this uh, updating the reference model, uh, we have the nine areas there. And we have said that uh, these are all voluntary. So basically operator can do one, two, three, or nine of the areas. And we are not saying that operator must do certain areas in order to be operator. And this is probably gonna change. There are, uh, we have identified that it's pretty hard if not impossible to be my data operator without doing uh, identity management and permission management, for example. So some of these areas will be in the future, my data operator award uh, required. And uh, on those required areas, we then uh, put more specific uh, ways of describing it and, and push the interoperability there. And then the other thing uh, that we identified that there is a lot to be done on uh, data models, but not on the data models of the data substance itself, whether I have this uh, clock that uh, uh, measures my pulse. This is not the uh, 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 interesting for my data operator community to go standardization pulse. But what is interesting for us is so-called transactional data models. So what, what kind of data models are needed for the interoperability of the my data operators and uh, transactions uh, together. So for example, these uh, permission uh, models and identity related models, etc. So we, we try to find out areas where we can actually uh, push the interoperability through data models. And there we want to keep it, uh, the human centricity in the center so that we really embrace the my data ideas also. So these are the couple of key things, but go to the paper, future work there. Thank you, Yogi. Um, uh, also, thank you for the great work done for the paper, together with, uh, with Joss and, and other contributors. Um, and um, yeah, I, I guess here we then move to the, to the next and the final part um, of today's event, uh, which is the Minded Operators um, Awards for, for this year. Um, and just before we announce the awardees, I want to also quick uh, give a um, few words about what really the Operator Awards um, is about. Yogi mentioned this already a bit in his uh, presentation as well. Um, but in short, uh, this is organized also to recognize all, the, all, all these uh, great organizations and companies that uh, do really empower individuals with the, with the tools uh, they need to, to manage and, and uh, share their personal data. What the different uh, operators um, needed to do uh, in order to also be recognized uh, as a MyData operator was uh, to firstly demonstrate alignment with the MyData principles that can be seen in the MyData declaration and mainly doing that by signing the declaration. Next up, also describing the operator activity, the different, uh, their position in the ecosystem, how do they um, act uh, in the different roles, uh, etc., and also describe really concrete use cases. Then also making sure that they are also transparent, um, in, uh, describing how they are ensuring that the individual is the primary beneficiary. Um, describing their systems uh, in terms of personal data management. Uh, uh, and if they're also um, in EU um, providing their services to show uh, how are they aligned with the requirements coming from the Data Governance Act. How this process uh, really went uh, was uh, a short, 
uh, an application uh, that was uh, submitted for a first review, and there was a process after that to still match with another applicant uh, to co-learn about each other's uh, applications, uh, understand how other service providers uh, provide their offering, and also help each other to improve their application. Then, after making any improvements, still uh, they had also the chance to submit uh, um, the application for final review. And if all of the application uh, that answers were uh, sufficient and meeting the awarding criteria, then uh, they were awarded the um, MyData Operator 2022 status. And now it's time to, to celebrate. Before that, I just want to also say uh, who has been behind the team uh, reviewing the applications and also setting uh, the questionnaire up. Um, so there's uh, Kai Kuikaniemi, Andi Oji Poikola, Kunda Jong, uh, Josh Langford and myself. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, also great work done by the, by the judges to uh, go through and support the, the, the operator applicants. So here we go. Um, if I would have a drum, I would uh, start doing a drum roll. Um, as we don't have it, then uh, uh, imagine this in your ears. So these are uh, the MyDit operators 2022. Uh, all together, uh, we have 33 service providers from 15 different countries. Um, and I will take also the moment to uh, read out all of the operators. So uh, own your data from Austria, Poly Poly, Seoul, Trinity from Germany, uh, ensure your data from Norway, iGrant.io from Sweden, MyDataShare and Sensitrend from Finland, Data for Good and Diabetes Services from Denmark, then Jeans, Miko, and Data Village from Belgium, um, although Miko is also present in uh, Australia. Uh, bits about me, Fair Drive from Switzerland, uh, My Data Mood, and Valencia Data from Spain. Peace Worm, Cozy Cloud, Fair and Smart, uh, own, um, One Cup, and Visions from France. Financial Passport, hopefully pronouncing correctly, uh, and Irma, Okto, and Schluss from the Netherlands. Citizen Me, Data Yogi, Pool, and Midex from UK. Self Innovations from the United States, Personium from Japan, and Candy from South Korea. You see how long this list is, and there's really great uh, organizations uh, uh, making uh, it easier for individuals to know how data uh, is used and also set the agenda for, for that. Unfortunately, we don't really have the opportunity all to, um, to be uh, in one place to really shake hands or, or give fist pumps to today. Um, but one thing that we could do um, is to just take a, a moment to take a group photo with all of the operators. So what I would ask you to do is just to get, um, put the camera on for a moment if you can and, and are willing to do that. Um, and then I will take uh, a moment to uh, take this wonderful group photo of, of all these great um, uh, organizations together with them. Super. Thanks a lot uh, for, for this. And uh, um, yeah, one of the ways or promises uh, that we had for this event was also to connect with all of the uh, uh, individual um, operator services. Unfortunately, we are also running out of time and this would probably not be um, like totally doable in, the, in this online uh, format. But one thing that you uh, could still do um, is about um, writing your questions, comments, congratulations even uh, to the Zoom chat. Um, and what we'll do is to post these uh, afterwards to the specific uh, MyDid Operator Slack channel where MyDid the community mainly communicates. Um, if you're not in Slack, then you can join us um, um, there uh, via this link, mydata.org slash Slack. And then there is the uh, possibility for all of the operators uh, to respond, connect, um, as well as uh, yeah, discuss further on, on how their services, services are provided and, and what are the opportunities uh, for collaboration or so forth. 
Um, if you're uh, preferring to stay in emails and not join Slack, but really want to connect, uh, maybe there's a way how to also send uh, your email contact uh, um, to, in the chat, either then to everyone to see um, or uh, in the direct message uh, directly to specific people. So um, the um, quick mention is also, I know many have already asked about uh, the next application round for the Mighty Delta Operator Award. Um, this will open again uh, next year in 2023. Um, and until then, um, yeah, we invite you to read, download the, the, the paper um, of Mighty Delta Operators, uh, Understanding Mighty Delta Operators, Join the Slack channel, stay informed via the mailing group. Um, you can subscribe um, uh, at the website. And um, if not er earlier, then let's do meet at the MyData 2022 conference taking place in Helsinki in Finland on the 21st and 22nd of June. Um, and um, yeah, we're at the team and the wider community for sure is um, excited to come together again after um, years of being online uh, and discuss together with leading experts in the in the personal data field and also enjoy the the bright nights of uh, of Finland that uh, uh, take uh, or take place uh, during the summer so um, for now um, I thank uh, all for this uh, taking part of this uh, event. Again, congratulations to all of the operator services and uh, yeah, hope to, to stay in touch one way or another. Take care and uh, we'll probably have, some people might have a few minutes to still engage uh, here online, but if you don't, then I'll, I'll say also goodbye uh, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Take care, bye-bye.